So, Paul, we've just spent a lot of time talking about these eight planets that we have, looking a lot about their geology, seeing volcanoes, seeing craters. But is there more than that? You know, because we saw that we were a bit surprised of how the asteroid belt came to be. So we also know there's this thing that we don't like to talk about called Pluto sometimes. So how does this fit into the equation? Yes, the question is, could there be things further out? I mean, is Neptune or, and or Pluto the end, or could there be more things out there? If not, why not? Yep. Um, and the trouble with this is that it's hard to see things further out. Yes. And the trouble is because planets do not shine by their own light, That's at least right. at visible wavelengths. They shine by reflecting sunlight. Yep. So basically, as you move something further away from the sun, light from the sun has to get all the way out to it and then bounce off and then get all the way back. That gives right. you a, a double whammy, a real problem. Here, for example, is me being lit up by a lamp. So that's going to be the sun and I'm going to be a planet. All right. And we see if I move further away. So you're migrating away from us. Yes. I get fainter pretty damn fast. You do. And obviously, you know, you're not going the scale of a solar system. I assume you're going the scale of a room in your house. That's right, yes. Um, and you dramatically do it. Now, obviously, we get to see you beautifully again as you come into the sun. So it really is, it's a dramatic fall off as you go. It's not just you're a little bit fainter, but you're a lot fainter for your distance. Yeah, I mean, we can look at the simulation here. So what I've done here is I'm going to send a pulse of light out from the sun, and there's the Earth where we're viewing it from. So there goes the pulse of light. Yep. And as that light spreads out, it's got the same amount of energy, but that energy is spread over more and more space. Exactly. So it gets thinner and thinner because those photons of light are now spread over. And eventually it hits this far away planet, and some of it bounces back. And so now you've got a sphere of light coming out from the planet. Which is also fading as it comes. Yes. So you can see that by the time that light gets back to the Earth, there's not going to be very much left. And so it really is. So it's not just the size of how big or small it is, but really the distance that's becoming the really tricky bit about seeing it. Yes. So by and large, the brightness of something goes as we call mathematically the inverse fourth power of the distance, yep. which means you make the distance 10 times more the brightness goes down by 10 to the power 4, which is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So, so you're 10,000 yeah. times fainter. So that's right. So if I'm 10 meters away, I'm 10,000 times fainter than if I were to be right next to you, one meter away. That's right. So that makes it really hard to see things further away. I mean, given that we were looking at earlier how far away things like Neptune already are, things beyond Neptune are going to be pretty far. Yes. Now we can look at the brightness of the planets that were known in prehistoric times. Yep. Now these are all had to be bright enough to see with the unaided human eye. That's right. Now we've got this magnitude scale. If you've done the stars course, That's you'll right. be familiar with this. But by and large, the, a negative magnitude means something's very bright and a positive one means it's very faint. And we explain why this doesn't make sense, but we keep it in the stars course. Yes. So by and large, the brightest star in the sky is about sort of magnitude zero-ish. Yep. Um, and the blue dots are how bright these planets are at their maximum. This is Mars, that's Jupiter, and that's Saturn. Yep. And so you see, when they're at their brightest, Mars and Jupiter are both about minus three, which means they're brighter than any star in the sky. But also, which is quite interesting, is Mars is obviously, as we explored, much smaller than Jupiter, but because it's much closer, they can actually be about the same brightness. Yes. And when Mars is on the far side of the sun, it drops dramatically. That's right. But uh, this dotted line shows you how bright Mars would be if we just moved Mars further out while keeping it on the same side as the sun of us. OK. So, so see, if it was out at the distance of Jupiter, it would be dramatically fainter. And then Saturn falls off yep. more. Yeah, okay. Yep. So brightest stars in the sky are typically about magnitude zero. And each, and down here is five magnitudes. It's about 100 times fainter. Yep. And that's about the limit the human eye can see from a dark site. Like that's if right. you're out back Australia, on a dark sky, you can see like that. If you, like me, grew up in London, you're probably <laughs> you're up here a bit. only going to see things down to about magnitude two or three, maybe on a good night. But, it also, but it also means the brightest planets we can always usually see. And that's actually why sometimes they are the brightest objects in the sky. In fact, in London, often they'll be the only things you can see. Every <laughs> other star being hidden by the street lights and the pollution. Um, but on a dark, clear place far from any clouds you can see down to about fifth magnitude and we can see we could pick up Mars even if it was out as far as Saturn yep. but it would be getting pretty faint. It would be very faint yes. It would just be one of those really little faint stars you can't see in from a city. That's right. So this is going to be the problem if there are things out there they're going to be faint unless they're very big like much bigger than Jupiter yeah. and that's going to make them hard to see. Okay.